Hey everyone. Sorry, a little bit late this morning. Had an impromptu visit from um, one of our friends. So here I am. Happy Monday. Welcome to Monday Check In. Let me know how you are. Hi, Marianne. Let me know how you are when you arrive. Um, I had I had planned to talk about the body as a portal today, and I I might, but I'm going to start with what's been happening because. So someone said to me the other day, I've noticed you're not very vocal on things anymore, which um, I can understand why she thought that um, because. Because the shadow banning is so extreme, A, most people don't see me, so they think I don't post anything. And B, um, I'm not sure if you caught the uh, post that I did on where I was trying to post something and it wouldn't actually let me. And I decided that it was actually a lesson, um, a good thing, that Instagram was almost reminding me, like the social media gods were almost reminding me, don't get stuck in the detail. And I think that, and I really believe that's what we need to do. Hi, Haruka, how are you? That we can keep swirling in the detail. And like really, it is February 2022. No one needs to be talking about the C word really at all. Because, because that's, as I keep reminding you, that's just, that first level and then it's the next one and then it's the next one now we're in the one that starts with h and then there's you know you've got all sorts of different things going on around the world it's all just detail of a main um thing and let's just talk about that so uh, but i know that ego is gets addicted to detail ego loves the detail it loves to swirl in it but what about this and what about that and I think if you're caught in either consuming or in posting still the same stuff that you were posting back in 2020, you're actually keeping yourself back. You're actually stopping yourself from evolving. And the people who are following you who are also consuming whatever you're posting, they're actually kind of sort of stuck too. <clears throat> Um, if you know what I mean by that. So, and then I said to her, but the Monday morning check-ins, we can talk about anything. So it's not like I'm not talking about things. I'm just keeping it to this container because I think it's not as heavily um, shadow banned if I do that. So what I want to talk to you about is the weekend. <clears throat> how, do, how are you feeling about, I mean, I'm, it feels like everything is a trigger word. How are you feeling about what happened in the capital? And then I want to, I want to use some of what I'm seeing now as an as an example for you of how much we. Okay, so it seems always seems like the government want us in conflict, and of course they do. Anybody who wants to manipulate us wants us divided, for sure. Uh, as a group, as a collective, then in smaller groups, the family, if you can divide the family, you control the family. And then as in our own mind, if you can, if, if you can divide the mind, if someone can divide your mind to be in conflict, then they can manipulate you. If they can, if they can have you in fear, then they can manipulate you in doubt, in forgetting who you are, in forgetting your power, then they can manipulate you. And for sure, this is the role of government. It, it depends on what level you're, again, I'm going to say, if you're on the physical level and you're like, that's just where I like to swim around, I'm not really interested in any of your woo-ha, fantastic. On a physical level, the government like to manipulate and divide because it gives them the power over us as voters, as consumers. The government really, at this, in this day and age, are a corporation that want you to vote for that want you to vote things in that gives their mates money that that helps out the industries that they want to help out they want you donating to things that helps put money in their friends pockets because their friends give them a kickback and it puts money directly in their pocket i mean government is nothing beyond that 
that's on a physical level. If you want to have a look at things on a more energetic level, then it's about who controls the intention, who gets to create my outcome. I get to create my outcome. Now, you, we can see that. We can see that with climate change. We can see that with all sorts of things where if I control the fear, if I control the intention, then I control the outcome. I can decide how people vote. I can decide where people give their money to. I can decide what people are sharing on social media. Helps to further my cause. On the bigger picture spiritual level, which is what I always like to take it to, What's going on is you've got the opportunity for a group to ascend and that really just means to remember who they are and to fully step into the power that we've always had whilst in the physical body. That is what our opportunity is now. And then you've got the folks who will not benefit from that going, mm -mm. and it benefits them for us to be in conflict and for us to be manipulated. So what do we see with what happened in camera? We see a massive showing up. We see a massive unity. We've been seeing that more and more from humans and it's brilliant and it's fantastic. And I highly recommend that you get hope from it. Like get hope from anything. Be hopeful, be in hope, be in love, be connected to the unity of humanity. It's a beautiful thing. What happens so quickly though, and this is where it's on us. We need to take responsibility. Two things I saw that happened very quickly after that beautiful uniting force. <clears throat> One, people started looking for a leader or answers because they don't want a leader. They're looking for a leader, but anybody willing to lead is a shill or is political or is trying to manipulate them, right? So it's, they're almost like little kids. Now, I'm not talking about individual people. I'm talking about the energy of the collective and what you see pop up. It's like little kids who go, I'll do it. I want to do it. And then they freak out. They can't do it. So they look to the parent. The parent then goes, okay, do this. And they go, you're not the boss of me. And they crack the sets, right? You're seeing, you're seeing folks who are going, I'm a sovereign being and I'm whatever, and then turn around and go, well, what do I do now? And that's, that's where we're at. We're at the phase from our end. Don't, don't worry about from their end for, for the minute what they're at. What we're at from our end, and when I say our end, I'm like, you know, team humanity. We are at the juncture where we start to really recognize what sovereign living is. If I'm a sovereign being, then I'm self-governing. Then I'm self-directing. Then I can be inspired by people. I can be encouraged by people. I can learn from people. I can look to people who know, who know more about this than I do. And I can say, what's your feel on this? What is your take on this? What can you teach me about this? But then I always bring it home and I run it through my own guidance and I go, okay, what do I want to do? And what I saw yesterday was a lot of videos about people going like it was kind of a bit of a mob mentality. People were asking for, I need money to help fix my car. And it was like this turning of like, oh my God, here we go again with the money. Okay, where's the unity? Where's the welcome, welcome, come, we'll all look after each other. Okay, we've gone from a big feeding each other and cooking for each other and this big love fest. And the fact that the next day it goes warm shows us that we're not able to sustain it. And we still look outside of ourselves for an outside force to sustain it. And so people will have pinned all of their hopes on, I'm going to go there, the mandates will be finished, and by the time I drive home, I'll be going back to my job, back to my house, back to paying my mortgage, and everything will be well. To those people, I say, there is no going back. There is no going back. This is not to make you feel hopeless. This is to remind you that the world is changing and shifting in such a way that these are outdated structures and systems and the way they ran, because here's the thing, 
you're going to the capital, you're uniting in a unified force, you're, go, you're chanting whatever you're chanting for, there's different um, agendas in there for sure. There's different desires in there for sure. But the biggest one is this has to stop. Now, what you're saying with this has to stop, whether you're talking about the mandates, whether you're talking about the corruption, whether you're talking about whatever. The this that you're talking about is fed by the very thing you want to go home back to. And we need to start taking responsibility for how we feed the beast, because, because we do. Because you see, the beast benefits us. And so we want to be able to go to bed at night and put our head down and, and be in peace with how what we do. And so we make things okay for ourselves and we, we go, well, I'm okay because of this. Well, I have to do that because of this. But it's, it's time. The juncture is here where if you're going to be a sovereign being, then you need to be self-guiding, self-leading. Let's stop looking for, we keep wanting people to lead us. No one can lead this force because it, it although it can be unified in its movement, everybody in it wants something different. People are there for different reasons. So there's that. And then the other thing that I saw was that, um, this lady with the car. So you've got this beautiful unity. You've got this, you know, this, this kind of, it really felt a beautiful force. That's kind of taking, take, like really stepping up and rising all over the world. Yes, it's being used to divide for sure. Yes, it's being used by mainstream and government to manipulate and to hold up as a like, see, this is how much these people don't care about you. And then they hold the other side up to this side and go, see, this is how much these people don't care about you. And then they throw us into the arena and they step back and they benefit from the fallout. But what happens is you've got this woman who, okay, we know, we know the videos, we know the videos real. It was like, you know, filmed by, I mean, I'm, you know, it, we, we saw it being filmed in action, we saw enough people standing around. It did not look like the whole thing was put on as a show. Let's assume it's real. It's not even anymore. That's not even the issue anymore. And this is what I want to remind you of too. This is the detail we get caught in and we swarm around this detail and we forget who we are. We keep forgetting who we are because let's take a step back and I want you to ask yourself today, how much did I feed that? What did I feed there? What did I share? How much did I get caught in it? Because what's so interesting is you've got people who will call for peace and unity on one day and the next day go to town on a woman who is either being paid to do this or is completely mentally unwell. In either case, you're feeding the agenda. You're feeding the very thing you marched against the day before, which is the conflict and the division and the manipulation. And it is time in February, 2022, we're no longer at share a clever meme. We are at res the responsibility and the consciousness in ourselves to sit and to say, where am I feeding this? Right? So, I'd love to know your take, your feelings about, you know, and it's so interesting because someone put in their um, stories, you know, why is everybody having, like, why are you now following this woman on social media? And I then, you know, sort of shared that and I said, because this shows us how much we're addicted to drama and conflict. Never underestimate how much your ego is addicted to drama and conflict and uses it literally like a high. And so it will have been suppressed the day before where everyone was like, oh, this is so lovely. And then each one of our egos rears and goes, I wanna have a go at this. And we, I see it in every group. 
and in every there is there is nobody not doing this and in that sense we need to start realizing that everything that is happening we are doing to ourselves there is a level and a layer of this where everything that is happening we are doing to ourselves and so we can gather in the millions and we can chant and we can march and all those things are fabulous and I'm not saying anything either way you want to go go you don't don't but all of that the next day, energetically, think about what you're putting in the collective energetic pot. You, there's love, hope, unity, all of this in there and it's swelling and swelling and swelling. And what they now know, well, what they've probably known all along is, and again, the they is on whatever level you, you choose to see the they at, let's say media and government. What they now know is that, that we're all mostly the vast majority, so vulnerable and raw at this point in time, so triggered, so easily triggered at this point in time that it just takes one little video or one how it was reported in the media or one little story on the project and everybody goes and it's on for young and old and they don't even have to do anything about it. And then that pot now is now full of conflict again and full of fear again and full of division again. And as much as each one of us is responsible for how we conduct ourselves in this time, we're also responsible for what we throw energetically at the collective, right? Because that's how you're showing up as much as anything else. So uh, let me have a look through your comments. Let me know how you feel about that. What was your take on Canberra? How did you feel? And like, you know what I'd love? I'd love if, if how we kind of conduct ourselves and how we felt about things was a little bit more sustained by us. So let's put it into the example of like maybe exercise, right? So let's say we're, we're training for a marathon. That's what this, the equivalent of this is, right? We're training for a marathon. At the moment, what we need is someone to literally run with us, hold our hands and run alongside us and talk to us and go, you can do this. This is fabulous. This is fantastic. Here, I've bought you drinks and I've bought you like your electrolytes and I've bought you your nourishment. And we need people to constantly do that. And you need to have a look at who am I looking to do that for me, right? For some people, it'll be certain accounts that they have to like tune into. For other people, it'll be um, the marches. For other, whatever, right? Whatever. You, your friend who you always go to, who you go, oh my God, make me feel better. You need to start looking at who have I put in that position and start running yourself so that when you come down, when you get triggered, you have a thing that you can access that you are self-sustaining. This is key now. It has got to be sustained in between. See, because the thing is, a lot of people who went, they're like, they get into the collective. They, they tap into that collective and it's really powerful. But because they can't sustain it themselves, when then that breaks up again and there's a going on your own, they really, they come down with a big thud. They come down, there's a massive downer after that because they're not able to sustain it themselves. And I would say to you, spend this week really asking, where am I, where can I start to sustain that myself so that I'm actually in training for the marathon and I don't have to have this running buddy in whatever form that takes constantly feeding me, right? Because what you're doing there too is you're taking constantly from that collective pot is okay it's fine it's what it's there for it swirls that energetic swirl is around each through us in us around us every single one of us take from it but what are you giving back what's your contribution right okay um hey everyone great to have you here uh, agreed some people think it's just about ending mandates and miss the bigger lesson yeah for sure and you know what the people that are working on the mandates great that's that's you know the lawyers and the whatever absolutely but yes 
for those of us who are sitting at home and going, oh, what was the news or what was the whatever, missing the bigger picture for sure. Because it's, that's, and that's where how you carry yourself in this is key. If you are two years in and you aren't becoming more self-sustaining, self-soothing and self-sourcing, self-guiding, working on your own connection. You know, I was thinking that again just before. I was thinking people are addicted to being told what is going to happen. Watch the accounts that are channeling predictions. Watch the accounts that are channeling predictions and their viewing and their following is through the roof because people want what's going to happen. What's going to happen? What's go is that going to end that? What's going to happen in this country? What's going to happen in that country? Is that, when is that? What's going to happen at the next portal and the next moon and the next this and the next that? What's going to happen? And if you're doing that, you're in your ego because your ego wants to know what's going to happen. Your higher, wiser self and aspect of your mind is going, don't worry about what's going to happen. What are you doing? What are you doing to prepare? How are you stronger now than you were? How are you less triggered than you were? How are you more prepared than you were? How are you more centered, more focused, more grounded? How are you in a bigger community than you were? Do you know, you know, how, how are you living more aligned than you were? But the thing is, the people that teach you that, like this account, like lots of tons of accounts, their account, their following is minuscule in comparison because it's like, no, 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 no. It's okay. It's cause, cause, cause we're, it's all going to be fine. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. The all being fine is a timeline option that is available. It exists. It is already here. Your ability to live it depends on your ability to match it. And that is not going to come through some psychic predictions or the, your running buddy. Your running buddy can't get you there. At some point in time, for sure, we can all use support. We can all use guidance. We can all use all of that for sure. It's there for us. Please do not close yourself off to support. Utilize whatever's available. And know that it is actually... It's there so that you can create a space in you and so that you can start to live from a perspective of being aligned and being self-guiding, self-sourcing and self-soothing so that when you are in situations where that support then is not there, you aren't falling back down. Uh, what do you think about using big tech social media platforms as feeding the beast? So I think that every single thing has two aspects to it. Every single thing can be used for good or it can be used for, I mean, I know that's a very like good and bad or, you know, light and dark or whatever. I mean, everything has shades of it for sure. It's not the thing that's ever the problem. It's how you use it and what your intention with it is. The unity that we have, the ability to uh, do a call out and say, hey, we're all here. We would not have that without this right now. So social media is actually what, see, because things have happened in the world before. Um, this, this attempt that's currently happening at this whole, you know, um, with the P word has happened before, but it wasn't able to get the hold in terms of the literally worldwide spread of fear that it could because there was no social media. At the same time, people would have been aware of, hang on, there's something fishy here and what if this is an opportunity to kind of whatever. That was not able to take a hold because social media wasn't there. So yes, for sure, we are, we are at an energetic um, level that we've not been at before in humanity. There is all sorts of things coming together right now to create the perfect uh, storm for human ascension. That, that, in my knowledge, has not occurred before. But social media is a massive part of that. 
uh, because it, it, it allows us and it enables us to have worldwide contact with each other. There are people on here, Haruka's in Japan, you know, there are people on here who aren't um, in Melbourne. Um, I'm watching people from all over the world. We're connecting, we're unifying in a way we haven't been able to and in a way we wouldn't be able to uh, at this point because we're not, uh, we haven't remembered enough that we can do it without this. But at this point, it is a unifying thing and we get to speak to each other without the, the middleman, right? We, yes, of course, okay, the platform is the middleman and the platform, the platform is controlling me to the extent that I will speak in code, but you know what the code is. And yes, the platform will, you know, is shadow banning me and whatever, but um, there is still a connection and there is still a getting through and who's meant to find it is finding it. And, you know, I mean, have a think about how many of you right now are at home? I'm in my home, you're in your home, and we're having this conversation because of the thing that I'm talking into, because of this network, and that's fabulous. So I, I totally feel like it's how you use it. Um, I stopped watching that halfway through. I didn't see much point in getting emotional about it. Haruka, do you mean um, the video with the lady? And Because then I agree I did too. Um, so what are your thoughts? How are you feeling? And is what's coming up for you that you might like some guidance on about seeing the bigger picture element of it, the bigger picture perspective? I'd love you to put in the comments, like where are you swirling in the detail? And and you feel like, or, or who's your support person that you're relying on now that you're seeing that and you're kind of not really in your own training yet? Because they're the two things that I'd love you to do. I'd love you to focus on if you if you if you felt like attuning your mind to being more conscious. Two ways that you could do that is that you could focus on okay, what am I throwing into the collective pot and get really conscious on that with um, you know, what do I give my energy and my time to? Um because like this lady, you know, this thing of like people started following her. Now there's all these memes about her. Are they funny? Absolutely. Of course they're funny. But look at how quickly we were able to go back into our conflict and our divide. Look at how quickly our ego went. Oh my God, I was good all yesterday. I'll let you watch that bloody, you know, thing. And I, you know, let you cry and get all hopeful. But now I, do, I want a bifo. And the trolling, I have seen the trolling equally on all sides. I've seen it on all sides. The trolling is bad. Like, by bad, I mean, of course, it's, you know, awful to be on the end of, but it's bad in terms of, like, how, how severe it is. Um, I'm considering deleting Facebook, though, even though it's mainly deactivated, but I've gone back to post things and realised nobody there is awake in it. Yeah, so I, I've been off Facebook... So when I say I'm off Facebook, I do have an account because I use Messenger, um, but I, I'm, I don't go on Facebook. And I closed my the account that everybody knew, and I closed my business account, uh, I think like probably about a year and a half ago. It is not a place that I hang out. I, I agree. I think... Um, it, it doesn't have a good energy. So when I can't, actually, that's a really good example of, of what I was saying. If you can use it in a way that works for you and in a way that you, you can bring your intention to it, great. I, I cannot use Facebook in a way that actually feels positive for me. And, you know, that has been a thing. Um, I run programs with clients and do things where they've said to me, we'd really like a Facebook group because we want to be able to talk to each other. And I'm like, I really don't want to be on Facebook. Um, so it's a thing I have to navigate going forward. But um, anything, you know, just trust your own instinct on that. Trust your own gut. Anything that doesn't feel good, where you repeatedly go to it and go, you know what, I feel like shit after that. You know, if that was a food, you'd stop eating it. Uh, if it was a person, ideally, you'd stop hanging out with them. 
Facebook feels so toxic. I agree. I, I find it's, it's interesting, isn't it? It is interesting. Clear, obviously, Facebook, Instagram, run by the same people. But yeah, it feels very toxic. Bad energy and no value. That's the problem with it. Then let it go. So this is, this is like how easy it is these days. This is, well, these days. This is how, this is the opportunity we're in now. Like we literally, it's like, there's no more time to fuck around. Now, I don't mean that in the sense that we're running out of time because we want to start looking at time as being just something that we've constructed, okay? So I don't mean that. What I mean is this is the time. If this is the time, I don't know if you've heard me talk about before, but um, I often say that like portals are like a bus rolling up at the front of your house. And if you're ready to get on it, that bus will take you far take you in the direction that you want to go with more ease and more speed than without the bus so this is just opening of an opportunity right now if you think of this time right now as one big huge massive portal yes i understand we have portals within that as well but if you think of it as one massive portal and this bus is arriving at your door and it's going do you want to hop on but staying on the bus means when it's not aligned with me, I'll let it go. It impedes my journey. This impedes my journey. In the past, because this is a world created by ego for ego, everything's been taught upside down. You, you've, you've learned this in the last however many years. Maybe some of you have known it for a really long time. Some of you, maybe like me, have really seen it since kind of like 2020. It's an upside down world. It's an inverted world where it's all the wrong way around. So what we are taught of as being selfish are all the things we should be doing. What we're taught as being selfless is just that martyring madness of staying in relationships that aren't good for you, hanging out in spaces that aren't good for you so that other people don't feel uncomfortable, so that other people aren't hurt by me moving away from that. That's what we're taught is selfless. And we're taught selfish is when you think about yourself. The thing is, when you move out of your ego enough to look at the bigger picture and you realize that the more I focus on me, my own development, my own compassion, my own connection with humanity, the more I'm conscious of what I throw in the collective pot, the more I walk through my day conscious of what is not aligned with me and moving it out of the way, the greater an asset I am, the greater a member I am of the collective. And But we're taught in the upside down world that that's selfish. Don't think about yourself, think about others. I've had this conversation with so many people where they go, I know, but I'm just so caring about others. And I'm like, you know what? If you're not caring about yourself as your number one, you have been given this life, this body. You are the steward. You are the steward and the guardian of this experience on this planet. And it is entirely up to you to make it all right for you. It is entirely up to you to create the kind of inner world that you want to live in, that you will thrive in. And the collective thrives collectively when we each individually thrive individually. Because the more conscious we are about ourselves, the more we focus on ourselves. I know this might be triggering the fuck out of many of you. But the more you are focused on yourself, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? What am I providing? Why does that trigger me? Why did that hurt me? Why am I doing this? This does not feel aligned with me. Let me choose alignment. Let me choose alignment. Let me choose alignment. The more you live like that, the better a parent you are, the better a partner you are, the better a friend you are, and the, the more of a productive energetically and as a role model member of society and the larger community you are. Um... 
Sabina, I'm getting to the stage when not much triggers me anymore. Beautiful, especially on the internet. Fabulous. I've noticed I've stopped arguing so much and don't get stirred up. Hopefully I'm moving out of my ego. Beautiful, Rita. Beautiful. So what that shows you is you are becoming aware and conscious of your ego and you now recognize that you are not that. You would not be able to choose not being triggered. You would not be able to look at it and go, oh, look at that trigger if you were not a separate energy of that. You are a separate, you are a separate being from that. It's an, but here's what I want you to know. So here's what I teach is a little bit different to what you'll find a lot of people teach. A lot of people will then say, reject the ego you know, in whatever way. They'll tell it, you know, suppress it, tell it to fuck off, tell it to go away, tell it to shut up, you know, whatever. Or that, and uh, you know, you, you have to be able to not have an ego. So here's my take on it. The ego is the least evolved part of our mind, but it, when you start to become aware of it, like Rita, like you are, it starts to become part of your navigational system. You start to use it to let you know where you have fallen unconscious, where you have um, gone off track. So as things still come up for you, which they will, they will continue to do that, you go, oh, okay, hang on, what's that about? And by getting to know, by that's exactly what I mean with how self, we've been taught that would be selfish, but actually self-reflection and self-regard and self-discovery are everything because that is what A, will allow you to be in your highest version of yourself, but also you are part of a collective that will benefit from you being like that. Does that make sense? Let me know if there's any questions on that the whole the whole selfish selfless thing and how so they've taught they've taught you to be selfless not in a quest because they want you to be a good compassionate being they've taught you to be selfless because that means a lot of looking outside you a lot of focusing on lack a lot of being out of your power a lot of looking at other people and going what do you need from me who do you need me to be what do you need me to tell you to make you feel better and in that way, we will police each other and the whole, that whole manipulation thing continues. And then we do it to the next generation. We, we, we teach it on this kind of really toxic lack of regard, this toxic uh, looking into the outside world for all answers and all, all of that kind of stuff. Um, now, did I miss... Oh, Haruka. I find that I'm constantly seeking answers by asking my spiritual master in me meditations. Great. And by asking my divine self, beautiful. I wonder if this is okay. I also watch Laurie and Phil Daly. I mean, I think whatever whatever um, lifts you, do it. Watch Laurie and Phil as much as you like. You know, that's your call. You'll know where it's not... You'll know where it could be interfering is if you're... If you're doing it if you're kind of needing it because then what you what you're most likely doing is putting a lot more value and worth in what they say than in what you say so again they can be your support crew for sure they can be on your support crew and they can be encouraging you and they can be inspiring you and they can be reminding you but you want to then take that and you want to go okay let me sift through what you've said and let me see what is for me here or what doesn't resonate and maybe yeah let me know if that helps Haruka all right well any other thoughts questions on the weekend how you're traveling anything you would like um what what do you feel it's time to let go of and you're reluctant to do it Because remember, do we win? Absolutely. The whole thing. The whole thing. That is a timeline that is guaranteed. But then it's you need to align yourself with that timeline. Because you can... You won't permanently stop yourself from anything. But you can miss that bus. You can miss that portal. Um, 
Okay, great, Rita, that's good. Yeah, so really start to use the ego as um, part of your navigational system. And, and, and when you start to become more compassionate, like really throw it some love. It's the least evolved part of our minds. It has this huge role of taking care of us and it's overwhelmed. It's like putting a toddler in charge of a whole entire like house. It's overwhelmed. You don't want the toddler in charge, but it's okay to have a toddler in the house because the toddler is the unhealed aspects of you, the least evolved aspects of you. And then once you can throw it some compassion, once you can really start to have regard for it and how overwhelmed and frightened it must be, it teaches you a lot about your fear. And when we know about our fear, we're really powerful. We're really powerful. When we are in a relationship with our fear where we are the adult, like I'm always saying, be the adult in the room. When you become the adult in the room with your fear, it is going to teach you everything you need to know about anything that triggers you, anything that frightens you, because you're going to be able to turn to it and you're going to have this safe relationship with it where it can speak to you and it can go. And instead of, instead of a grown person having a tantrum, which we've seen, instead of like ramming your car up the side of someone else's instead of like becoming abusive or triggered or any of those things that we all are all the time it can say to you i'm really frightened of this and it will know that you will hear it and you will regard it and you will say okay as the adult in the room i'm gonna start looking into that it's not your responsibility and you take that you take the power take the power away from the least evolved part of you and you have it in your own hands. When you can be compassionate for your own fear, when your own ego is something that you feel love for, you can start to extend it, you do start to extend it out to other people. And so when you encounter people and they're really frightened and they're fully in their ego, it doesn't trigger yours anymore. And you actually start to send them love. You can actually, you'll still walk away. You might still go check yourself. You might still whatever. But it won't trigger you into your ego, which is what's happening currently around the world. Ego triggers, ego triggers, ego triggers, ego. Once you start getting really good at being compassionate and seeing it in other people and going, yeah, we're not doing this. I'm not going into that with you then you can extend it out on a bigger level and you see it as a collective, the collective ego. Once you start to recognize that the collective ego is the collective fear and it's swirling around, then you start to realize this is how we are manipulated. Then you can have compassion for the collective and then you can start to recognize, oh, this is actually what we're moving beyond. This is actually what we're currently doing. We're actually currently growing beyond the collective ego being in charge of mankind, of humanity, and we are becoming the adults in the room. And once you do that, then, but you're still always going to want to come back to yourself. Any answer you ever need about anything will be from yourself because you will be able to relate to it. Don't worry about the details. That's where ego will go. Well, I can't relate to that. I've never been frightened of that. Or I can't relate to that. I've never attacked anybody about that. Or I would never shout like that or whatever. Forget the detail. Look at that person. Look at that collective and go, where have I been frightened? I know this feeling. I know what it feels like to be this overwhelmed. I know what it feels like to be this out of control. Um... It's hard to let go of being able to work. Yeah. Yeah. So my own hubby's going through this at the moment. And it's a big, massive identity shift for him. Um, there are, of course, the logistics of, you know, you've, you food, rent, mortgage, whatever. Let's just move that aside for a moment. And let's sit in the fact that this whole needing to work, needing to work, is part of the programming in the upside down world. It keeps us stuck in our ego. You need to work. What are you going to do? You won't be able to survive. We get taught that from a really young age. And it keeps us in survival mode. Catherine, if your first step is 
Let me move out of survival mode. And I think you might be someone that already does something that you love. Get creative in what it could look like. Ego will also want to know, but how will I do it? But how much will I get? What days will I do it on? Who will? Whatever. It will want to know exactly how and how it's going to arrive. Anytime we do that, this is why there's a whole chapter in my book that says just throw out the whole goal setting detail stuff. Because anytime we're really, really specific, it will only be the past shadowing what we really could create currently. You won't be able to really grow into your full expansive self by bringing in too much detail. Move into the energy of allowing. Move into the energy of what do I love and how can I bring it to my day? What do I love and how can I bring it to other people? What do I love and how can I share it with you? What do I love and how can I do more of it? And if you can just stay in that, Catherine, for like a few days, really immerse yourself in it and just feel the shift. And then from that place, it will be interesting what opportunities come your way. That would be the, that's my advice at the starting point. Uh, what are your thoughts on selfless donation mentality, especially in the religious communities? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the thing is, it's important to do what feels right for you. There's no hard and fast rule on what is right and what is wrong in anybody's life. I would say, always go back to this question. What is my intention here? What is my intention here? And I believe that when people are well intended, that's the energetics that we live in. That's the energetic, I, my intention is the energetics I live in. What can happen with that when it moves into someone else's hands and what they do with it, I don't control that. Once I am aware of that, like once I became aware of the fact that cancer is a multi-billion dollar industry making people a lot of money and that there are really no studies on curing cancer, there are studies on making chemo with less side effects. I stopped donating to cancer charities. Now, is that to say don't, it's wrong to donate to cancer charities? If somebody is doing it right now with the intention of helping, then that can't be wrong. The wrong element comes into it with, well, what are the people doing with it who get the money? And so in anything that we do, so even the donation, selfless donation mentality in a church, and I just wanted to say what I just said because like I would never donate in a church for the same reason why I wouldn't donate to um, a cancer charity. But if somebody's in that church and they feel called to share, to, to give, go for it. If they're doing it because I have to, is the person next to me watching how much money I put in there? What will the priest think of me if I don't give any? Am I going to hell if I don't give any? Like this is starting to be a whole heap of decision making based on fear based on fear and lack and clearly from ego. So then I would question that if I was that person. I would, or whoever's asking me that specifically, if you're asking me specifically, I'd say, question your intention with it. And that will give you a lot of information. Uh, I was trying to share my thoughts to my mum about the disappointment I had for her church, making her attend a different church as she had chosen to be free. Uh, she couldn't see how she was let down. So, <clears throat> two things could be happening there. One is that she, it's, she, she isn't let down because she doesn't feel let down. Another is that maybe she, she is not, her expectations are such that she is not aware of what's going on there for her. But really, I would draw you back to that, Sue, and go, well, hey, if she's not, if she doesn't feel let down, brilliant, great. Because while she doesn't feel let down, she's more empowered than if she felt let down. 
And so you could even take that a step further and go, why do I feel let down for her when she doesn't even feel let down? So, you know, it could be triggering, like it is triggering in you. And then I would say like, this is where, you know, we can often like move through the world and we can get really triggered for each other. But really it's always just showing us what's coming up for us. So the whole being let, the whole being, um, let down, I would say, Sue, grab pen, grab paper and go, where do I feel let down right now? Where do I, where, where am I feeling let down? Why is, what's coming up here for me? Because it would be a different conversation if she came to you and said, oh, you know, I feel really, and you, you would go, yeah, wow, that's, you know, and you went into that with her. But if she doesn't feel it and you still feel it, so yeah, recognize that she's actually more empowered by not feeling it as long as it's not a suppression. If it's a genuine, I don't feel let down, then she's actually more in her power than if she did feel let down. Uh, Fiona, hi, feeling in my power and sovereignty, standing up, fabulous, disconnecting from others that no longer resonate, resonate with me, uh, feels good. Can't be bothered engaging convo with those that will never be awake. No, me neither. Um, and I don't mean that in a really, I don't mean I can't be bothered talking to them about anything, but I can't be bothered I do not have the energy to convince you of anything. I do not have it. And I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I don't, I don't, it's not why I'm here. Which, which has been controversial at the start because I kept saying to people, I'm not here to wake anyone up. And people kept coming to me and going, but oh my God, I can't wake this person up. I can't wake this person up. And I kept saying, well, just stop doing it. Um, I'm hoping that collectively we're starting to really shift more into like, it is not our job to wake anybody up but ourselves. So just forget it, stop it doing it. So I love that you've come to that, Fiona, and it will help you be a lot more um, in your own energy because it, it's just draining. Um, hubby also looking for a new job. Well, I'm wishing wishing him, um, of, hope lots of opportunities come his way and wishing him much love and um, yeah. Okay, great, Haruka, I hope that helps. All right, everyone. Um, any last minute questions, let me know. I um, picked a card before when we started from the Starseed Oracle. I'm looking at it funnily. I'm looking at it strangely because I didn't think this was the card that I picked and I think I have swapped cards around. I don't know. Anyway, um, were you going to talk about time today? I was. I was going to talk about time and I was going to talk about body being the portal. Your body is a portal. Um, shall we do it tomorrow? Okay, so the card is weight of the world. Boundaries, let it go, it's not yours to carry. Weight of the world. Boundaries, can you say that right way around or is that, um, is that like, a, like a wrong way around for you? Weight of the world, boundaries, let it go. It's not yours to carry. All right. Um, okay, let's do... Um, let's do tomorrow. Let's do tomorrow. Wrong way around. Yeah, okay. Let's do tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> perfect reverse. It is perfect, isn't it? Let's do tomorrow. Let's do 9.30 tomorrow. And let's talk about time and your body is a portal, which is what was coming up for me to talk about. But I just wanted to, with just, you know, Canberra was big over the weekend and so I wanted to talk about that. Um, all right, folks, much love. And um, come tomorrow if you want to come, let people know if there's anyone that you think will want to join. And I will see you then. Bye.